China is a country that carries a lot of controversies. People are constantly arguing about the right opinions, the right way to interpret China. If you empathize with China, you might believe from the bottom of your heart that China means well for the world. You know, people who doesn't like China are just full of prejudice. If you are every other person in a Western society, you might feel righteous criticizing China because you wanted to protect the world from disruptions. I mean, people are tribal. We all want to defend our values and what we believe in. That makes sense. But for me, having lived in both the UK and China and resonating with both cultures, the real question is how do I reconcile the tension and decide where I stand? Is it even possible to be neutral? Well, I have some thought on this. I want to share my personal story with you. Oh. So let's get personal. Let's start from a time when my perception of my country experienced the first big shift. At the time I was 15 and I was using VPN for the first time in my life. I registered an account on Facebook and on Twitter and you know, eating the forbidden fruit. I could already read in English, so everything was just super exciting for me. I was on YouTube, I was scrolling and then, then I came across something that was about to turn my world upside down. A brutal massacre of Chinese students. Are events in China out of control? Hundreds of thousands of people here in Tiananmen Square. Massive military assault aimed at smashing China's pro-democracy demonstrations. It was a video about the Tiananmen movement. I mean, I didn't know it because no one was supposed to talk about it in China. The noise of gunfire rose from all over the center of Peking. The young man in front of me fell dead. I fell over him. Two others were killed yards away. We picked up a woman with a bullet in the head and took her to the nearby children's hospital. In a footage, I saw a man stepping onto a tank, a very provocative move. I saw photos of people getting hurt. I saw mothers mourning for their children. I learned that afterwards, voices were stifled and dissent prosecuted in jail. From what I saw, the Tiananmen movement was a portrayal of the just fighting the unjust, the brave fighting the corrupt. You know, the students were portrayed as hero and the Chinese government. It was a tyrannical machine, the bad guy. I just immediately knew I went into a very dark territory. I mean, no one had told me about this in my entire life, including my parents who plainly knew. And they said, oh, you're not supposed to talk about this. You know, don't share it with your friends and don't you dare ask it from your teachers. There were more and more signs of discontent with the government, particularly the 84-year-old leader, Deng Xiaoping. It is very important to know, to let the people in the world to know the situation in China. Deng Xiaoping is very stubborn. He should go down, you know, immediately. Here's the context. Until that point in my life, I was taught a lot of positive things about China. Things like China was a unique country and that its system has a lot of advantages. We learned about Marxism Leninism. Although we knew there was a cultural revolution that has wronged many people and there was a great leap forward that has caused a lot of damage. The main theme is you should always love your country no matter what and you should always be a loyal citizen. Probably because I was more politically minded or I was really traumatized by what I saw. I remember vividly that was the moment where I felt like I was drifting from my world. I started to question every narrative I was told. Before any of that, China was China. China was my school, it was my parents, it was my friends. China was my Lao Shu who taught me to read pictographic characters and asked me to good good study day day up. Then China became... I didn't even know. I didn't actually try to find out more about what happened. You know, knowing that at 15 for me was just simply enough. I felt like I was cheated, like the whole patriotic education was just a joke. In the same year, my parents and I took a trip to Hong Kong and we bought a lot of the banned books that 
could never be published back home. I read about people like Long Yingtai and Liu Xiaobo, people who wrote so passionately about the ideal society, which they think could only be achieved through a Western-style democracy. That was the moment that I properly learned about the meaning of the word autocracy and repression. The air was filled with shouts of fascists, stop killing. They're shouting, stop the killing and down with the government. I didn't really understand the impact the whole thing had on me until I moved to England to study for my undergraduate degree. When people started to ask me where I came from, my neck just felt really hot. Like I became so worried about how people would react to that and I wonder if they would treat me differently. I also learned from conversations that the label China had, like communism, had a really negative connotations in the West. Deep down, I felt really embarrassed. Like saying the word China felt like earning my shame and I just didn't want people to associate me with the things that I saw at 15. So in the end, I just stopped saying the word China. When people asked me, I said, I'm Chinese. I had a Syrian British friend who is a lovely girl and she talked about her country with a lot of love and affection. But every time she mentioned Syria, I was instead reminded of the Syrian civil war and that terrible image of hundreds and thousands of lifeless, skinny bodies compelling into tiny human heels. And it wasn't that I wasn't willing to believe it was a lovely country, but I was so aware of my own prejudice. The time I lived in England was the time I barely had a relationship with China. I really wanted to fit in. It is literally empty at campus and it is 8 o'clock. Summer? August? <laughs> oh wait, have you recorded? <laughs> no, it's fine, I'm not gonna shy or whatever. <laughs> the majority of my friends were British and I experienced firsthand how a different system has created so many well-spoken and confident and just generally really smart people. There was a civil society and openness and inclusivity that I felt like China doesn't have. I remember back in 2019, during the general election, every single one of my classmates were talking about which party they were going to vote and why, and I had a close friend who stayed up all night to wait for the results. So, during my stay in England, I did truly, truly admire the Western civilization. Slowly, I allowed this culture to engulf me and influence the way I see the world. That said, I had truly belief in every single narrative the media, the newspaper said about China. Well, that made me a problem to myself. After I went home, I experienced this intense feeling of jointed disconnection with the environment. Some people call it reverse cultural shock, but it was something far deeper. I just could not connect with the Chinese culture and the Chinese people like I used to. There was a group of friends that invited me to join for their dinner. There were friends that I was really close to and I've been keeping in touch with. I just did not enjoy that meetup. I remember there was a moment when we were at the dinner table and they were talking about the things they heard in China. They talk about their relationship with their parents and how much they look forward to graduate school. And I just remember looking at them and I thought, I didn't really want to hear any of these. Like, why can't they be like my British friends? It was a terrible thought and I should be missing them, but I just couldn't feel it. Like, why? Couldn't I feel it? It wasn't that I was completely westernized because I wasn't so safe with my western thinking either. I still read newspapers like The Guardian and The Atlantic. As you might know, these newspapers describe China's COVID policies as draconian, that government wants to take full control of its people. But being back at home, I honestly didn't feel any of that. Like I felt really safe and I felt protected. It was business as usual. For the entire 
pandemic, I never got COVID, nor did any single person in my family or my extended family. So I was really confused by my experience. That was the point where I realized that I have to seriously start to think about my values. And I can't just be obsoliating between two narratives just because my location changed. So I did something about it. In my research on Tiananmen movement, I asked questions that I didn't even want to entertain before. So like I wanted to investigate the motive behind the students. Was it really about wanting a electoral system given how much they knew about the world? Or was it more about wanting better social mobility and more personal freedom? Because you know, at the time in China, people couldn't even choose what career they could pursue because there was such a shortage of labor in key industries. What about the crackdown? Was that a thoughtless, hurtful attempt to kill people? Or was it a calculated decision that did take things into account? And my healings happened when I learned about different sides of the story when I find out about the generational gap between the young protesters who grew up in a very comfortable and peaceful environment, feeling entitled for more, and the older generation who had fought their entire life to lift China out of poverty and chaos. You know, when I find out about how it was also a clumsy and inexperienced decision to preserve China's long-term stability that, despite how brutal it was, did contain China's crazy economic growth in the next few decades. People were so upset at uh, what Deng did to crack down on June 4th that nobody would want to think about his historical role. Deng Xiaoping, it was a complicated character. He did crack down. He felt that they needed to, to keep the peace and allow the country to grow. But he also led the country to uh, modernization. I wasn't denying the things that I saw at 15, but I just realized it wasn't the only thing that happened. It's just not wise to let one single narrative to determine your entire worldview to look at something that is so complicated and difficult in your culture, especially in a time where I think more people resonate with the West than with China. And I know that. For a Chinese person like me, if you completely subscribe to that and abandon your Chinese ways of thinking, your Chinese point of view, it's just gonna hurt your self-esteem. It just does. I guess it was about appreciating the nuance of different perspectives and just being okay with living with different truths. You know, keep an open heart. I truly do believe that people can get along with each other better and with themselves better if they could learn to do that. I never think it's wrong to honor human lives and freedom and different voices, but I also think it's not wrong either to think long term and want to preserve the stability of a country. You know what? I resonate with both views and I'm going to let both live in me. Does the word China still feel like a synonym for shame? I know we got really open in this video and I hope that doesn't change our relationship. My story was just one example and I really hope that it does resonate in some way. For those of you who have lived in different cultures or even if you're just observing another culture, I'm pretty sure that you have gone through similar things. So let's help each other out and let me know in the comments your experience and your thoughts on this. I would love to read it. By the way, I also enjoyed a lot filming this video. I was experimenting with different backgrounds and I hope that it can show you different sides of China, the more traditional side and the more modern side. I hope that you enjoy the change of backgrounds. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.